The kids these days will never know the simple joys of life before smartphones, back when so-called Nokia bricks ruled the lands. These primitive devices could survive pretty much anything, hence their nickname. But maybe they aren't as indestructible as you once thought. Stick around to find out what, if anything, remained of this unfortunate Nokia, plus a buttload of some weird, wonderful, and downright amazing sights for your eyeballs in this episode of Things You Will See For The First Time In Your Life. After watching too many superhero movies, it's easy to fantasize about a world where human beings possess amazing superpowers. But there are a bunch of creatures on Earth that already have incredible abilities. Case in point, the humble salamander. You might think these slender amphibians are nothing special, but they have an incredible trick up their slimy sleeves. They can regenerate their limbs. Salamanders are able to regrow a limb, whether a tail or a leg, within weeks. But how do they do it? When a salamander loses a limb, the wound clots over, just like in humans. But here's where they differ. Salamanders will then develop a clump of cells beneath the surface called a blastema. These are stem cells, which are cells that haven't differentiated into a final cell type. You and I both started out as a clump of stem cells in the womb, but as those cells grow and spread, they eventually shift to become other types of cells, such as skin cells and neurons. In the case of the salamander, the ball of stem cells at the site of the wound then multiplies and grows, with the stem cells converting into bone, muscle, and skin. A miniature version of the lost limb forms first, which then grows until it fits the rest of the animal. Scientists aren't exactly sure where these stem cells come from, what triggers them to revert, or even what signals call for the formation of the blastema. But this is one special talent us humans can be jealous of. Salamanders may be able to regrow their limbs, but there's one thing they'll never have, opposable thumbs. Why not prove that we truly are the advanced species by using our oh-so-special thumbs to hit those like and subscribe buttons? And don't forget to tickle that little bell icon to make sure you stay up to date with the latest Be Amazed content. Take that, salamanders. If you live in a part of the world that's cold for most of the year, you're probably used to taking special precautions to stay warm and keep things from freezing over. But one teen from North Dakota was definitely not prepared for an unexpected cold front when this happened. Ice, let's go inside. Nope, this isn't a magic trick. That really is a bowl of totally frozen ramen noodles, complete with levitating chopsticks. Back in February 2021, the National Weather Service forecast life-threatening cold for North Dakota, with temperatures expected to dip as low as minus 59 degrees Fahrenheit. But these noodles didn't exactly freeze by chance. Instead, curious teen Isis Seo decided to test out the extremity of the freezing weather by bringing a fresh bowl of noodles outside and holding them up with chopsticks. According to Isis's mom, it only took about 20 minutes for the noodles to freeze solid from boiling hot. I want to see her freeze a bowl of alphabet spaghetti spelling out be amazed next. Environmental activists are always thinking of new and impactful ways to make a statement. And that's exactly what Greenpeace did in February 2021 when they decided to do this. You might have a hard time understanding how dropping giant boulders into the ocean could possibly help raise awareness for a cause, but Greenpeace have a rock-solid plan. Working from the Greenpeace ship Esperanza, activists place two to three ton granite boulders across 55 square miles of seabed in the offshore marine protected area. But all this boulder dropping isn't random. They have been dropped strategically so that they will form a new underwater barrier about 30 miles off the coast of Sussex, UK. The area was set up by the UK government in 2016 to safeguard the seabed habitat, which is populated by creatures like starfish, anemones, seals, various fish, and even dolphins. But Greenpeace says the government has failed to deliver on its promise because there are currently no restrictions on industrial fishing in offshore Brighton. 
This new barrier will stop destructive industrial bottom trawlers from fishing in that area, because they will risk damaging their fishing gear if it comes into contact with the boulders. I just hope the fish are smart enough to swim out of the way of the huge falling rocks. The weather really is a weird thing when you stop to think about it. One moment there can be sunny skies, and the next it could be raining cats and dogs. But have you ever seen something like this before? What kind of witchcraft is this? Well, what you're seeing here is simply the edge of a rain cloud, which just so happened to fall in the middle of a street in Kerala, India. Although this is one seriously rare sight, these rain margins can appear pretty much anywhere, and if you're lucky enough, you might even find yourself driving right into one. It might look totally crazy at first, but Actually, it makes a lot of sense when you remember that the source of rain is the clouds, not the sky itself. Rain usually falls from cumulonimbus clouds, which are a type of dense, towering vertical cloud formed by water vapor carried by powerful up-air currents. And rain, like most things, has to start and end somewhere. Even if that somewhere is slap-bang in the middle of your street. Have you guys ever come across something weird, wonderful, or downright amazing you think is worth sharing with the world? Get in touch at clips at bmas.com, and you'll earn yourself a shout out if it gets featured in the next episode. And if we like your clip enough, we might even buy it too. What are you waiting for? Who doesn't love penguins? Their adorable little waddles are enough to melt anyone's heart. But what if I said they could get even cuter? These flightless birds at the St. Louis Zoo gather gleefully around the scale after a penguin named Pedro rather loudly shows off his affection for his caretaker, K.C. Donaldson. Yes, all that yelling really is a sign of love. Because the species is considered threatened, it's important for the zoo to monitor the penguins' overall health on a regular basis by recording their weight. As you can see, they have no fear getting on the scale. In fact, I've seen worse behaved kids at my local supermarket. Looks like I'm officially adding Penguin Keeper to my list of dream jobs. What's small, ladybug-like, and gold all over? Well, take a look for yourself. The golden tortoise beetle can be found in southeastern Asia, and they look just like living jewels. They get their name thanks to the strange structure of their elytra, the hardened wing covers that protect beetles' wings. As you can see in this footage by Tok Chom Sony, these insects have a flattened ridge outlining the body and concealing the head and legs, much like a tortoise. This clever design probably helps the beetles to hunker down and tuck in their body parts when they're under attack from predators. This metallic bug may look totally gorgeous in its adult form, but its larval stage is considerably less glamorous. When tortoise beetle larvae feel threatened, they will deploy a strange defense tactic by sticking old skin and fecal matter into their anal forks, otherwise known as a fecal parasol, which basically means poop umbrella. Weirder still, if there are multiple larvae around, they will form a pyramid with shields facing outwards, which mom will then sit on top of like some maniacal poop queen after swapping poop shields for gold, this little beetle is like the insect world's answer to the ugly duckling. I think we can all agree that freak weather has earned such a name by being exactly that, freaky. But lightning storms and hail the size of tennis balls aren't the only types of weather capable of making you feel uneasy. Just take a look at this massive fog bank fishermen spotted rolling in over Lake Michigan in 2014. Looks like something out of a dystopian movie, right? As you might already know, fog is the condensation of the moisture in the air. A fog bank is classed as an area of fog that is sharply defined, meaning you can see it with the naked eye. 
They will often form at sea where cool air moves quickly over the surface of the warm ocean. The cool, incoming air lowers the temperature of the air just above the water's surface, which holds a lot of water from evaporation off of the ocean, and that water vapor condenses into a fog. As you can imagine, fog banks like this one can cause a lot of problems for the navigation of ships. Sailing into one of these things would be like a scene from a doomsday movie. And speaking of the sea, what do you make of this mysterious object that was discovered at the bottom of the ocean in July 2016? This utterly strange purple orb was spotted by a team of researchers aboard the EV Nautilus, a sort of laboratory equipped with cameras that can peer deep down to the ocean floor, during their investigations in the Channel Islands off the coast of California. At first, they were totally stumped by what it could be, hazarding a guess that it could be some kind of aquatic spider sack. But there was only one way to find out more, by bringing it in for a closer look. Yeah. Let's see. Ready? Using a handy suction tool aptly called Slurp, they hoovered up the spiky purple disco ball and brought it aboard the research vessel. The team dubbed the object Blobus purpulus. Sounds super scientific to me. Close-up photos of the creature, which measures about two inches in diameter, revealed that it's not actually just a single sphere, but seems to have a couple of lobes, making it look more like a sci-fi brain. After their first further examination, the team thought it might be a pleurobranch, a more obscure relation of the neurid branch, or sea slug. However, they have since guessed that it may belong to another distantly related group of snails, called the velutinids. Their guess is as good as any, because it could be several years until scientists can determine whether it's actually a newly discovered species. Man, these Pokemon Go locations are getting harder and harder to find. Learning about different cultures is always fun, but there's one cultural oddity in Brazil that will probably leave you with more questions than answers. You probably have no idea what you've just seen, right? This explosion of funky dancing and colorful costumes is something known as Careta Furucao, or Little Train of Joy, that has become widely known in Brazil. As you can see, this colorful train is accompanied by an energetic dance troupe in costumes that represent popular but seemingly unrelated figures from kids' comics and TV including Mickey Mouse, Goku, Captain America, and a horrifying 80s Brazilian character named Fofau. This group is part of a sightseeing truck that can be hired for city tours or parties. Careta Furacao travels day or night as the characters samba, stomp, and twerk their way through the streets, bringing joy and amazement to those who see it. Oh, and did I mention that the performers are capable of some pretty incredible gymnastic feats too? Carreta Fercao was created in Ribeira Preto, in the state of Sao Paulo. But after the troupe's performances started to go viral online, many others were set up across the country. Up until now, the characters have never revealed their true identities, which adds a certain aura of creepy intrigue to the fun. I don't know about you, but I think Carreta Fercao should be mandatory everywhere you go. There's something unmistakably magical about the idea of skating on a frozen lake. But what if that lake was covered in loads of alien-looking frozen crop circles? The star of this breathtaking clip is photographer and all-around outdoors adventurer Carl Ramsdell, who took to the ice on Mirror Lake in New Hampshire in February 2020. Although they may look out of this world, these intricate ice rings are simply formed by the lake's natural freeze and thaw cycles. When an ice sheet is thin or thawed enough, it will break when covered with a layer of snow. That snow then gets saturated with water and melts. Water from the lake will then flow up to where the snow melted and flows radically outward over the ice, melting more snow into slush. This happens until the weight of the slush breaks through the ice at the edge of the newly saturated ring. 
The new crack in the ice then allows the water to flow up out of the lake and repeat the process, creating this truly mesmerizing pattern. Anyone else think this frozen lake looks like Van Gogh's starry night painting when viewed from above? Cast your minds back to that poor, unfortunate Nokia brick we saw brutally destroyed at the start of this video. Want to know what became of it? Check it out. As you can see, this so-called super durable mobile device doesn't seem to stand a chance against an industrial belt sander. These multi-use tools are often used for trimming, sanding rough surfaces, or rounding and shaping, and you seriously wouldn't want to let your fingers get too close while using one. The Nokia 3310 model, which was released in the year 2000, is one of the most iconic mobile devices ever created. Its famed durability is often investigated in crazy online damage tests, but few have obliterated it quite as smoothly as this. And just like that, poof, the phone has disappeared without a trace. Let's just hope he was wearing a face mask to avoid breathing in all that plastic Nokia dust. Uh, I can think of a few things I'd like to introduce to the belt sander. Do you have a set of professional pipes, or are you more of a shower singer? Not everyone can be gifted with the voice of an angel, but there's more than one way to make music without the use of a single instrument. Check it out. <laughs> This is the incredible art of throat singing, demonstrated by Enoch social media star Sheena Novalinga and her mother. And if you can't quite figure out who is making what sound, they're probably doing it right. Throat singing is a style of music that is unique to the Inuit people, though other tribes, such as the Tuvan people, perform iterations of it too. As you can see, it usually involves two Inuit women standing face to face and using their throats to produce trance-like guttural sounds that intertwine in a hypnotizing harmony. The sounds are produced by both inhalation and exhalation, and the first person to run out of breath or who is unable to match the pace of the other singer will start to laugh or stop singing, ending the performance. Throat singing has become something of a lost tradition over time, but Sheena now hopes to educate people on the beauty of Inuit culture through modern mediums like TikTok. If you ask me, it's certainly more interesting than most of the stuff I hear on the radio these days. Mice are far from everyone's favorite animals, but not all rodents are pests. In fact, it might surprise you to learn that some can even be, dare I say, beautiful. On first glance, it might seem like this mouse is just a fancy, realistic-looking toy, but it's actually a living species known as Asterix satin mouse. Asterix mice have a gene that affects their coat, essentially causing it to curl and appear wavy, sometimes even including the whiskers. As babies, Asterix have good coats and continue to do so up until the age of six to eight weeks when the curls relax a little and the mice start to look more unkept. Anyone breeding these mice to show has their work cut out for them to select mice that keep their curls as long as possible, although they are rarely seen in show circuits nowadays. The satin part is the name given to a genetic mutation resulting in a coat type that has a metallic shine to it, which can range from silvery white 
to shiny black, brown, and coppery. This beautiful mouse is particularly special because it has a coat that is both satin and asterisk. It's like the rare Pokemon of mice. Don't you just want to put it in your pocket? Now, here's a challenge for you. Go grab a piece of paper and a pen and draw a perfect circle in one swift movement. It's a lot harder than it sounds, isn't it? Well, unless you're this guy. Talk about a flick of the wrist. This super smooth criminal is artist Mirko Kaviki, who goes by the name Draw Me Default on Instagram. It might look easy enough for him, but our human inability to draw a perfect circle is so well known that it's even studied by science. You see, the parts of our brains that are responsible for drawing circles and recognizing perfection are separate, so they have a hard time working together to produce impeccable circles. In fact, circles are one of the hardest shapes to draw because the human brain doesn't have enough resources to focus on connections of movement and do cognitive tasks at the same time. This guy must be one smart dude. Any street-savvy motorist knows to keep an eye out for any rogue animals on the road when driving in a rural area. But forget about pesky squirrels and passing cows. One driver in Alberta, Canada got a real treat when they had to stop to let a mother moose and her newborn baby cross right in front of them. When the cars came to a halt, Mama Moose walked right into the road and waited patiently for her calf to catch up with her. As it tentatively made its way across the road in front of the cars on either side, Mama Moose kept coming back to check that her baby was still following closely. You can almost hear her saying, Come on, buddy, nearly there. The calf was still wet, indicating that it had been born just hours earlier, and you can tell by its gangly leg movements that he was still learning to walk. Moose are notoriously solitary creatures that prefer to keep to the quiet woodlands, making this a sight that's as rare as it is adorable. Which of these things made your eyeballs pop the furthest out of your head? If this video has whetted your appetite for all things amazing, why not check out the previous episodes in this series next? Don't forget to send your own clips in to clips at bmas.com. And thanks for watching, guys.